Restaurants on Unstoppable, what the most successful restaurateurs know that you don't. Take us to the point where you really started living intentionally to develop your dream, your, your vision for a restaurant. And it was your, and your husband put the seed in your, your head, you said, right? So mm -hmm. take it at that point. Like, what did you start doing to live intentionally to execute that first restaurant, say a so uh, basically what I ended up doing was I started to dive into menu creation. I mean, I think that restaurants are rest are food, service, and atmosphere, right? And so um, Saya was in, as, as we are in right now, it's kind of blended right now because of COVID, but, you know, it was small, it was intimate, it was brick exposed, it had the beams, you know, and um, for me, I just felt like, okay, like, I think we should be doing like cheese and charcuterie and um, pastas and focus on like maybe Spanish and um, and Portuguese cooking because I knew a little bit about that. Um, I also feel like restaurants, again, going back to the community conversation is like if we can be more collaborative as opposed to being competitive, then ultimately we have more uh, of an opportunity to succeed and survive, yes. right? I love that mentality. I think a lot of people get in trouble and they think that, oh, I have all this competition. But the, those who work together go further together. Then you can go faster alone, but you go further together. Right. So w w where were those collaborations? What were you talking about? Well, we, we started talking about, okay, well, how much money do we actually have to put into furniture? And, like, what was already here? Because it was, for the most part, a pretty key turn, like, a... Uh, a location you know um and the restaurant that was we were we were taking over was raw vegan which was way ahead of its time it probably would have been right. very successful now right that's like 11 years ago wow. and yeah. so uh we we started to look at okay like where's our money better spent like you know we've got some furniture stuff we need to work on but we have a really beautiful bar at that time it was copper bar and um but the kitchen had like nothing because everything was like Rough. dehydrator yeah. based yeah so that was where most of our money was going to be spent and and so we started to think about, okay, if, if the money needs to go into to the kitchen, then how does that translate to the guest? Because the guest doesn't know how awesome a stove is or, you know, the walk-in that you have. So uh, we started to build on, on the, the menu piece and what we needed first off for, for equipment in order to, you know, succeed at ex executing it here in the restaurant. So um, what was appealing about this physical space? Why was this a good spot for you? What, what, what drew you to it? Again, it was still very n nostalgic. It yeah. was like that place where like, you know, I'd heard over and over and over again about Scandia, which was one of the top restaurants in Newburyport years and years ago. Billy Joel was and Christy Brinkley. Right here? Yeah. Oh, had cool. dined in the front window oh. and like they had all this it's like such love an interesting for front window too. Yeah. Even Jared was pointing it out when we were walking in that like it's just like not symmetrical it's like a little like yeah like, it's like, such a weird window but it's charming it is and you know it really you know the energy in the space when it's small and intimate is really what gets people excited personally right yeah and uh, you know we can in larger restaurants try to achieve that by like turning up the volume a little bit and dimming the lights a little bit or like paying attention to how you see in the dining room so there's like natural energy in certain areas but the larger the restaurant gets, the more, you know, concerning you have to be about how do you create the atmosphere yeah. and, that, and that level of. But you did mention that there was a failed restaurant here. W were they closed or were they yeah. looking for an exit? Like they were a combination of looking for an exit, but at that time had basically announced closing. Okay. Um, and they were very short lived, like six months. They also suffered some, you know, personal, um, I think, health issues as well. Oh. And so, you know, it. I, I just looked at it like it was the right time for me. Yeah. I guess what I'm getting at is, were you somebody's exit strategy? And I think that's such a, such a great way to get into this industry because sometimes people just get in, they have a vision, they have an idea, they go to execute it, and it doesn't stick you yeah. know for whatever reason it might be and then they're stuck and they just want to get out yeah you know, they just want they're like we, we, we tried it wasn't right and now now we just need an exit strategy and if you can be that exit strategy for somebody if you can be their way to recover i mean was it like that at all or i mean i'll be honest with you they put the restaurant on craigslist i bought it oh. on craigslist <laughs> think about that That's transaction crazy. isn't yeah. that crazy? That is crazy back then was like people were just like learning about craigslist oh, now it's crazy. like an everyday thing but right. yeah th i mean so i guess so i guess that they were probably in a place where they were like you know, I gotta, I gotta dump this quick. Yep. I mean, they, they had a long lease ahead of them. Yep. Um, but to me, the things that I loved about that space was really just like, I could work this space. Like I was doing, you know, two floors in my previous job and, and, you know, going back to even the back Getty, I was, you know, deck space, outdoor deck, this, you know, outdoor yeah. grill, oyster bars, outdoor bar. Well, you maybe inside. 20 strides from the front of the back yeah. house right here. And to me, I was like, I could, I can succeed at this because I can hear everything in the dining room. I can connect with everybody. I can 
you know, hone in on the staff that I have and make sure that they're capable of serving in the way that I want them to serve. And, you know, I was so fortunate to have built, again, a small little group of individuals who followed yeah. me to open the restaurant in a, in a very non-competitive way, yeah. but in a, just a way that, you know, they wanted to work with me. And, and so there was already that familiarity for the community to walk in and recognize the bartender and, and to know the server and, and obviously to know me. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I fell in love with the ability to kind of work the space. Yeah. And even now, till this day, when I do work the space as it's brine, it's just a moment of like, oh, my God, this was this is so great. And, you know, maybe one day when I retire, I'll still have a little 30-seat yeah, restaurant. Yeah, and it is a very charming, cute space. We uh, we do have the cameras rolling, so I'll make sure Jared gets some B-roll yeah. of the actual space. Uh, so how long were you in this physical space here um, before moving across the yeah. street? Yeah. So I was here for about two years okay. and uh, my husband, so I got married and my husband had uh, the space across the street that he owned. And so your husband's in the industry too. I didn't realize. Yeah. I mean, he does all the mechanical and HVAC um, and does a lot of construction and has assisted me in all the projects from this point forward. I actually met him through doing the project at 10 Center Street. Okay. Um, and he has become certainly our number one critic. Like he, <laughs> he knows what he likes for food. He knows, you know, sometimes I think he's a sounding board for when I'm thinking about, you know, creative, competitive food. And he's thinking just be a little bit more casual and simple. Um, but uh, yeah, so we, we made the decision to go across the street because, well, we were, you know, I guess it's also the challenge that a lot of restaurateurs have. You know, we sit there and we think, like, we're doing great, so let's grow, yeah. right? Versus, like, let's just maintain. We want more. But like, at the same time, I think you did it right because you did start small. You did start with something that was manageable where you could be in all these spots with a few strides across the restaurant. You, can, right. you made it small. You made it manageable. And you had something special. You created something special. 